Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. One in two ECCU residents not financially resilient, according to survey. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Monday 9th, October 2023, brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Details when we return. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all, perils big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. <laughs> Welcome back. According to a regional survey, just about half of all citizens in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, ECCU, are not financially resilient. Governor Timothy N.J. Antoine is calling for a coalition of partners to join the ECCB in crafting and implementing a strategy to scale up financial literacy and inclusion in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, the ECCU. Joachim Duplessy of HDS News reports. According to Governor Timothy N.J. Antoine, financial literacy and inclusion are strategic priorities for the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. He was speaking at a regional event to announce the results of the Financial Literacy and Financial Inclusion Survey. Financial inclusion refers to access to a range of financial services, while financial literacy refers to the ability to understand and use financial knowledge for personal financial management. Governor Antoine called for partnerships in the ECCB in fashioning and executing a strategy to advance financial literacy and inclusion in the currency union. When it comes to our personal finances, We must hope for the best, but plan for the worst. And never forget, hope is not a strategy. I say that around here all the time. You guys know me. Every citizen should aspire to be financially literate and resilient. So armed with the results of this survey and seized with a sense of urgency, I now issue a clarion call for a coalition of partners, champions, institutionally and individually, to join the ECCB as we craft a strategy to scale up financial literacy and inclusion in the ECCU. The governor suggested that this could be achieved through strong collective commitments such as collaboration between the ECCU's Ministries of Education and the Caribbean Examinations Council to make financial literacy a high priority for high school graduates. Governor Antoine also said that if every workplace, starting with governments, offered financial wellness programs, this would be a giant stride in push for financial resilience and wealth creation. Do you imagine what our currency union would be if every citizen were financially literate? Let's do that thought experiment for this moment. Could you imagine what this currency union would be if every citizen were financially literate? We would be thriving. I think. Could you imagine if every high school graduate in the ECC were financially literate? To achieve this, we need our Ministries of Education and the Caribbean Examination Council to make this outcome a high priority. I am sick and tired of people with plenty subjects and no skills, including money management skills. That's a life skill. How could you graduate with 12, 14, 15, or 25 subjects and can't manage a checkbook? There's something wrong about that picture, folks, that does not sit easily or rest easily with me. And I hope there is some also righteous indignation, for want of a better term, at least a discomfort about this situation that would propel us to action. Because that's what we want today. Governor Antoine noted that the ECCB's financial literacy and financial inclusion survey itself was made possible through partnerships with the OECS Commission and the World Bank-funded Caribbean Digital Transformation Project. The survey reveals, and I won't say much because the big reveal is going to come shortly, that one in two persons in the ECCU are not financially resilient. So if I survey this room, I can safely conclude 
that some of us are not financially resilient. It's just statistics. And I don't cast any aspersions. We have a big challenge on our hands. When I think of financial literacy or financial resilience, I think of it about as the capacity to absorb and bounce forward, not back, forward from a stock shock, such as a health event, a job loss, an economic downturn, a natural disaster, or even a pandemic. And let's face it, there are persons in our currency union who have experienced all of these shocks over the last five years. I want to situate the work that we're doing this morning because we have to see people and see situations. This is not about numbers and statistics. Development is always about people. We have to see people even as we understand the numbers. The central bank governor also said that over the past 21 years, the ECB has sought to raise the level of financial literacy through its savings and investment courses, its annual financial information month, and in the past seven years through its weekly podcast, ECCB Connects. Joachim Duplessis, HDS News Force. Local contractors are currently grappling with extortion as criminal elements are demanding more than $30,000 per month in exchange for protection in Trinidad and Tobago. In an exclusive report by CNC3 News, a contractor in the private sector decided to speak out. CNC3's Otto Carrington tells us more in this report. Local contractors find themselves entangled in an extortion scheme, facing demands from criminal elements exceeding $30,000 per month to protect them. A contract in the private sector shared audio and video recordings with CNC3 News that expose an alleged gang leader's attempt to extort him and issue threats. The contract is currently overseeing a private project along the east-west corridor. The site is now under police protection. The incident began a month ago, but it intensified over the last two weeks as the nature of the calls and demands took a different and more concerning direction. CNC3 was given the recording involving the alleged gang leader and the contractor. I don't come wrong here and I know vibes. Mm hmm Aki. Uh-huh. Don't talk that. See, over. And them kind of mad thing. Uh-huh. They got better, better. Who's down here? Everything and nothing. Again, I just, all it doesn't want you prints up all our things. Away. I don't show you, but you come like I gain you. I hold Overlook that security to me, sure, because all them years gone by, and I never tried to let nobody disrespect or you. The alleged gang leader operates a criminal gang in the Mount Door area. Demands were made of the contractor to employ community members and cover security expenses. Another recording, this one 18 minutes, was obtained during an encounter at the site office when the alleged gang leader, accompanied by a few other individuals, entered the contractor's office. What are saying? Yeah, what's going on? Why, I just... Why was he on? Tell him, no way. No. So I said, I don't walk till Wednesday. I feel, I feel like I can just take off all the card, run security every f***ing thing. I'm telling you, because I find it like it's a big tick. You think I'm just feeling like it's a big tick sitting with me? Last week, tensions escalated, prompting the intervention of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. You see, it had me in there, in walking no way, boy. In walking a place. The, the duty is just to rub and see and do all kind of bad things. You know why that prevents him from coming there? Huh? You are listening? I, I, boy, not that cool. See, it's all there, boy. These recordings are now in the hands of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service and senior police officials told CNC3 News that the matter is being monitored and protection is also being placed for the contractor and his workers. Last month, Member of Parliament for Oropuch East, Dr. Rudal Monilal, in a media conference urged the business community to take a decisive stance against extortion. 
He highlighted the involvement of gang leaders and incarcerated individuals who have been making debt threats and extorting millions of dollars from businesses. This after another incident of extortion claimed the life of a Maloney housing development contractor, Kevin Barker, last month. Otto Carrington, CNC3 News. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Ontillion Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Trinidad and Tobago's Chief Justice is calling for serious public service reform as he believes the current staffing system is antiquated and posing to be a major threat to the efficiency of the judiciary and government ministries. Akash Samaru of CNC3 has more from the opening ceremony of the new law term, including what the government had to say about Archie's address. Within the first few minutes of his address, the Chief Justice made it very clear that an antiquated staffing model remains a major hindrance to an effective legal and public sector system. The structural and systemic deficiencies are crushing all of us. And the time has come for major public sector reform. Now, the Chief Justice sought to clarify it's not only the judiciary which is affected by this, but he said those in the public sector do not have the authority to speak as freely as he can on the topic. Ivarchi underscored that a major constraint to their operations is a lack of autonomy over staffing and financial management. And he sought to remind the nation that he's brought these issues up in the past. Unfortunately, little has changed in that regard. The head of the judiciary said the world is evolving and new processes call for a new approach and not a conformance to ineffective policies. If our paradigm in the public sector is that we value the status quo above service delivery and we see stability as meaning that no change is permitted, and if we fail to embrace emerging technologies and modern thinking, then we are lost. The Chief Justice said a modern judiciary cannot run on antiquated models of staffing, which has seen clerks assigned to them with little to no legal knowledge. He revealed that the salary structure in the judiciary is not as appealing as other public sector entities. And Archie added that too much salience is placed on university degrees for some positions, which may rob them of the talent they need. Following the civil service methodology, I could not hire Bill Gates as an IT technician because he does not have a university degree. He lamented that in 2023, they're still trying to solve a 130-year-old problem. What is we really do? And Archie called for administrative independence for a discussion on state employment policies. Now, all of this was said in the presence of Acting Attorney General Stuart Young, who afterwards told CNC3 News that government is committed to working with the Chief Justice to address the issues raised. In fact, Minister Young said those talks have already begun. And he said the government is looking at how best they can address the issues highlighted to ensure a more efficient judiciary and government ministries. Akash Samaru, CNC3 News. Over in Jamaica, the governing Jamaica Labour Party, JLP, is trailing the People's National Party, PNP, in the polls. Kalisha Williams of TVJ News reports. In June, the PNP arguably made a shocking advancement in the PNP commissioned Don Anderson polls after trailing the Jamaica Labour Party for years. At the time, 30.2% of Jamaicans said they would vote for the PNP, 25% JLP, and 44.8% of respondents were undecided. So the trend, which is what I, I, I pay more attention to, is the party coming from behind, pulling level, and then pulling ahead. Now, while the JLP is closing in, according to the latest RJR Aglina commissioned Don Anderson polls, if the government calls the election now, the PNP would win. 29.5% of respondents said they would vote for the PNP. 26.1% JLP. 23.8% were not sure and 20.6% indicated that they will not vote. So what we've had is a, is a narrowing of the gap between the two political parties and it is now a much more competitive environment based on 
the last three polls that we have done, February, June, and September. A very competitive environment just outside of the margin of error of plus or minus 3%. <music> I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Oh, 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 o